Miles, mine from uh, Serious Automotive Training. Uh, my name is Terry Roach, and I want to continue on with our training modules that we left off with, uh, dealing with uh, General Motors powertrain performance, and we're on the topic of uh, fuel injector diagnostic diagnostics. So what I want to do today is I want to refresh your memory on uh, the fuel injector, cover um, the use of the J39021 fuel injector tester, We'll go over some of the computer-based training here to uh, illustrate the fuel rail and the different, uh, the different readings that we're going to get. But the object of today's game is to accomplish the um, what we're calling the balance test. We're going we're to utilize the chart. We'll fill the chart, and we're going to read different pressures to uh, determine if a fuel injector is bad. Okay. Previous module, we looked at the coil test utilizing the 39021 with our multimeter. Today, we're just going to concentrate on fuel flow through the injector. So let us begin. The information that I provide to you is direct from uh, General Motors training. As a prior GM instructor, spent uh, years at two different schools teaching mechanics and uh, working in dealerships. So the information I get is provided by the uh, GM itself. So this course, the information comes from uh, the course number 16009.1. This was a four day course from General Motors a number of years ago for port fuel injection. So I'd like to give a shout out to Boyle Automotive here in Tamaqua, Pennsylvania. They're a great sponsor of my YouTube channel. Uh, they provide me with all necessary equipment and some of the training material that I need to uh, share with you guys. So good, good, uh, good promoter of my, my channel. So the 39021 comes in a port fuel injection kit. This is a very popular tool. You could still buy it on eBay. Uh, the port fuel kit comes with all the adapters the tester, the fuel gauge, everything you need for port fuel, okay? So let's look at the injector diagnostics. The, the tool itself is going to be, uh, is going to be used. We're going to make two pressure drops utilizing the gauge. We'll record the readings. But the vehicle that we're going to be testing today is a particular vehicle of mine. It's a 1995 Corvette ZR1. This had an LT5 engine. Not the LT1, the LT5. This is the Lotus engine. 6,739 Corvettes from 90 to 95 came with this option. Okay, it was a 4 cam, 16 injector, 32 valve, 179 mile per hour Corvette. Okay, so we'll talk about the pressure in that. But first, let's look at uh, our training, computer-based training here. So this is a breakdown of the fuel rails. So the fuel rails on this one, uh, I'm not seeing where the uh, regulator is. We'll cover the regulator when, ah, regulator's right there. Just so you're aware, the regulator is always on the back, the return side of the fuel, okay? Unless it's in the tank. But for my particular vehicle, it's on the return side of the fuel rail, okay? There's a Schrader valve on the rail. That's where we're going to hang our gauge. So right on the side of the rail, the adapter comes in the kit, hook the fuel gauge up, and we're ready to go. So the way it works, let's talk about the tool for a second. The tool has two separate sides. Coil test, which we did previously, and balance test. Now, R95 Corvette has a Bosch injector. Right out of the box, I always check the injectors, even if it came in for a tune-up. I'm pulling that injector harness and I'm checking resistance. So across the tops of the injector, with it unplugged at room temperature, I'm getting on this 16 ohms. Why do you need to know that? Well, sure, they should all be in range. It's a really easy check. But what you need to be concerned with is when you utilize the tool for the balance test, it's going to give you two ranges, the half amp or the four amp scale. So for the four amp scale, it's injectors that measure 1.8 ohms or lower. So if we go across the leads, Across the tips of the terminals of the injector with the two leads and we're getting less than 1.8 for example throttle body injector we set the scale to 4 amp if it's above that my 95 Corvette which is 18 ohms 16 ohms I'm setting the scale to 2.5 amps so grab your tool power it up two test leads real simple you can hook it to your jumper box the battery another car battery Whatever you got, power it up. 
You can even take it to the junkyard if you want with a jumper pack if you're looking for an injector. So, test sleeve comes out. That is for the injector. Oh, let me grab my harness. Harness adapter I have right here is for my particular 5.7 engine. Okay? It's just two leads going to the top. Now, let's say you have an older 3.4, the 4 cam, a 3100, a 2.8 with the plenum over all the injectors. Well, there's another special tool. Bam, it's the Dash 210 adapter. Unplug the harness. Here's the selector box. You don't have to remove the, the plenum. So that's a pretty neat tool. It just plugs right into here, pulses the injector one at a time as you go through your, uh, your testing. So, again, the object of the game is to utilize the tool to pulse the injector through the harness when it's set at the right scale, just push in the button. It'll turn the injector on. You're going to measure the fuel. Or you're going to record the fuel pressure change for each cylinder. And obviously, you're going to eliminate any of the bad uh, injectors. So let's hook our gauge up. We got our fuel gauge. Now, remember, engine temperature, room temperature. Engine's not going to be on. One injector at a time. We're going to hook up our... Our Schrader, so right here on a fuel rail, I have a screw in Schrader. Power up the pump. You can turn the key on. You can bypass the relay. Whatever you need to do. And once you get fuel pressure, drain it off. This will purge the air out. There's a purge on the side of this one. You could open the purge. This will balance your gauge for it. So, the way it works, gauge in hand, tool in the other hand, one injector at a time. You're going to run the pump. Now, most GM cars are around 48 PSI max, 47, 48. This particular one is 55. For 48 to 55 PSI is the static pressure that you will see on the gauge when you energize the pump. If you don't have that, there may be another problem inside the fuel line, and that's where we're going to use these fuel shutoff, fuel line shutoff adapters to isolate if it's in the tank or if it's on the injector side. So we'll get into that when we talk about fuel pressure regulators. But for now, two readings you're going to record. The top one for each cylinder is the static pressure. GM also likes to call it uh, uh, static pressure and leak down check pressure. So that's your that's basically your pump pressure. So on my test, I got 55 PSI on the first reading for every one. Perfect. Nothing's leaking. The check valve in the tank's not leaking. I don't have an injector pouring out while it's not being tested. Good. Number two. Now we're going to take the second reading. So the second reading is going to be for each injector simultaneously when I energize it. Okay. So these are, uh, for this particular injector, they're saturated injectors. The smaller ones are peak and hold. The saturated ones doesn't take as much current. Okay. So uh, the peak and hold will a little bit less current or more current we'll get into that later too for you so one injector at a time pulse it get the reading so my first one my 55 dropped down to uh, uh, 14 that was a difference of 41 so as I go through the test all one three four five seven and eight were identical so I know that's the golden number that's what I'm trying to achieve what you're looking for is a change between one and a half psi plus or minus for each one. So I know all those cylinders in red are good. Now I got to number two on my LT5 engine. Start it with 55, pulse the injector. Now don't forget, now this time I'm plugged into number two and I got a reading of 18. Well, a reading of 18 is a change of 37. So that's plus or minus more than 1.5. So that injector fails. Number two fails, and that cylinder will be lean. How do you know it's lean? Well, you're going to see some adaptive learning on your Tech 2 scanner. So when we talk about uh, the learn adaptive learning on the, um, on the Tech 2, you'll get to see exactly what I'm talking about. So continue on. Number six, same thing. We start out at 55 PSI on the gauge. First reading, we record it. Pulse it. Flows through. It has a drop all the way down to 10 PSI. 
that's a 45 PSI difference, okay? So that's about one and a half PSI out of our, out of our one and a half PSI range. So that one fails. Now that one, because it flowed more fuel, it's gonna be rich. Again, on that, so number six, now if we're doing these in the sequence of the firing order or the number of the cylinders, two and six will be on the same side of the cylinder and um, that one would fail, it would be rich. Again, if it was on the opposite side, you might be able to see it on our Tech 2. These older cars, older computers weren't as quick. Well, they were quick, <laughs> but the, the recording capability wasn't as quick. So you may have not seen that misfire uh, diag diagnostic show up anywhere. That's why the tool is great. The tool, the tool is utilized for the coil test. It checked the integrity of the injector coil, the electromagnetic coil inside. And it also does the flow test for the, the balance test of each injector. So what the balance test is it has to be within one and a half PSI, okay? Which is equivalent to 10 kilopascals. So if your gauge is reading kilopascals, hey, you're tracking. You know what we're talking about. So let's, um, let's regroup here. Let's see what we, what we talked about. We illustrated the, the fuel rail. Remember the, on the, the fuel pressure regulator is on the return side. You may see that question on, a, um, on an ASE question or, or somewhere with your GM training. Some of the older ones, the newer ones, I say, have um, the regulator in the tank. But these, mine has the vacuum hose. For the test, you can leave the hose on, but I always take the hose off and look, give it a little shake, make sure there's no fuel coming out because the regulators do leak, okay? Uh, we went over the chart here. We took two readings. We took the reading for cylinder one. First reading, second reading, it was just a drop in the gauge. Recorded it, looked at the amount of the difference in change, and it had to be no more than one and a half PSI above or below the norm, which was 41 PSI, okay? We talked about our tool, our 39021. Again, always use your ohm meter. Turn the light on here. Multimeter, go across the injector first. Get that resistance value. If you don't have the book to tell you what the resistance of the injector is, bam, you know right here how to set your scale. Okay, um, any questions for me, give me a shout on YouTube. Follow me on LinkedIn at Terry Rooch, or you can email me at seriousautotraining at yahoo.com. Again, we'll come back. Our next module will be dealing with the Tech 2. We'll get some screenshots put up, and uh, we'll get into some graphics for O2 sensors. So uh, keep, keep on uh, following me on YouTube, and I uh, hope to talk to you guys soon. Thanks again.